Hello there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we have the original clock from the DeLorean car, the Back to the Future car. So this car was made in Northern Ireland, stainless steel outer panels, and it was around about the early 80s. I think because of pricing and lack of power, it was a bit of a flop as far as sales were concerned, but it is one hell of an iconic car. It's one of those cars that everybody will recognise because it's the Back to the Future car. I've seen them before at car shows. I've never seen one in the wild, you know, driving past me out uptown or anywhere else. So, uh, yeah, they're a bit, of a bit of a rarity. Now, John, a viewer, messaged me to say that he has a clock and it's never worked since he's owned the car. And I said, well, I would be interested, but also I'm slightly apprehensive because obviously I don't always fix things on this channel. You see the mess I sometimes get myself into. But he said that they're not irreplaceable. They're rare, they don't come up very often, but they're not irreplaceable. So uh, yeah, he understands that I might not get it working. And I said to him, I wonder if it's a VFD display because the Rolls Royce has a VFD and that's also from the 1980s. And sure enough, he said it is a VFD display. Now I had a quick look on Google and apparently loads of these are faulty, probably because of the age of them. And uh, a lot of people are seeking out alternatives like LED ones and stuff, but there's something magical about a VFD, a vacuum fluorescent display. They just look beautiful. Remember the old Astro Wars games and various tabletop games from the 80s? They have that in them. So uh, I've got a letter here. It says, hi Vince, as discussed in our emails, please find enclosed a console clock for my 1981 DeLorean. I have owned the car for one and a half years and the clock has never worked. I have no idea when it last displayed the time as these are commonly non-functional in these cars. It is 42 years old after all. You can see the circuit board is corroded. Well, I haven't yet. Uh, but I'm hoping this will clean off. I haven't tackled anything myself for fear of making it worse. I've included the case with the clock so you can see how it goes together and how the buttons will work when back in the car. The bezel is damaged at the side, but you can't see that when it's installed, so it must be all there. I suppose it's all hidden away apart from this little bit in the middle here. I've included the summary of the wiring for you below and also included the DeLorean wiring diagram if it is of use interest. The rheostat wire is used to dim the clock, but this won't be used on my car until I buy a new rheostat dial in the future. What that will do is it will dim this if it's anything like the Rolls Royce, it will dim this when, for example, you dim your lights. It will also, also dim stuff like the radio as well. Sorry, the internal lights. You know, if you're driving at night and you want your, not, not the external lights, you want your internal interior lights dimmed, then uh, the rheostat will uh, allow that to uh, everything to dim, like your radio, this, etc. And he's uh, he's got it here. So it says blue, black, green, and red. So we've got four different colors here. And it looks like the purple one that goes to the red is the permanent lie for memory. So in other words, every time you turn your engine off, you can't have it just connected to the ignition because otherwise you're gonna to have to keep resetting the time all the time. The green one here is gonna be the power 12 volts from the ignition. The black is gonna be the ground. If we were just to go between green and black, surely that will get it working and let's just forget about the memory for the moment. Now, he did show me pictures of it. It looks very corroded, so I'm not gonna plug this one in, and I've gotta be super careful because you see that little glass nipple there. If I break that, it's game over. This display will never work again. Right, okay, so that's that button there that you can press in. Oh, this is also, is that cracked as well? Yeah, this is also cracked in the glass here. There's a crack going through it. Can you see the crack in the middle there? That's a shame. So that's gonna show up when it's on. Now, what is going on in here? Wow, there's a diode there that's green. It's more green than black. This has had some serious water damage. Look at that. Wow, well there's some joints there that don't look, oh, I mind you, no, they're just for those buttons there. How do they work? Are they clicking like that? Look at the way the click buttons work. Right, okay, I'll tell you what, before we look at this, let's have a quick look at the wiring diagram. I've got to be so, so careful with that bit there. In fact, what I'm gonna do is, not that it's gonna give it much protection, I'm just gonna sort of wrap it in a bit of blue tack, just to, uh, you know, just in case my tweezers or something slip and go over it. It'd be less inclined just to knock the end off. Thanks for putting this in here, John. Oh, look at that DMC. That looks so good. So it was John DeLorean that, uh, I don't know, was he the owner of the company? Or the inventor, I suppose, he was the owner of the company. It's a great name, though, DeLorean, isn't it? Even as a surname, it's a great name. 
Right, so he's on a little arrow here to the clock here. So let's zoom in and see if we can see what's going on. So if you look here, we've got the black, which is going to be the ground. We have the green, which is going to be the switch light from the ignition. And we have the purple, which is going to be the permanent light for the memory. And then the red one is going off to the rear stat, which we're not going to be worrying about. Well, you know, I think, uh, I think it seems straightforward enough. I'm just not sure whether we're going to have to have 12 volts connected here and here to get it to work or whether it will work between 12 volts here and ground. But we'll soon find out. Let's have a look and see what it says back here. Britax Vega, I've definitely seen Vega before. No jewels. That just means that like, when it comes to quartz watches and stuff like that. In fact, there should be a little crystal in here then, shouldn't there? Where is the crystal? Oh, there's more components underneath the VFD display. That's not so good. In fact, that's the crystal there, I bet. Just there, you see the thing with two prongs behind that ceramic capacitor. And we have a chip here. Yeah, and we've got a little transistor here. That's the diode I'm talking about, which is more green now than anything else. I think to begin with, we should, what capacitor is that? 22 UF, 10 volts. You know, I might change that just uh, just because. I seen that in, what else did I see that in recently? I think in the quad, was it in the quad audio system? I don't actually know what that is. Is that some sort of other capacitor that you can tune yourself, like an airspace capacitor? I really do not know what that is. Anyway, it's a complete and utter mess back here. So I'm just going to take a picture off the wires here. I think I'm going to remove these wires because they're, they're going to annoy me. It'd be nice to see this light up because the VFD gives off such a nice display. And of course, it's original as well. Looks like we've got some sort of model number or something here, 983-100-P. Let's get the IPA on it and see what it's, uh, see what it's doing. So I'm using isopropyl alcohol. Now I haven't checked the price of DeLorean cars recently, but I know years ago they were very expensive. In fact, let me have a quick look now how much they cost. £37,000 and there's still a lot of money, £55,000. Do you know what? I thought they were. I thought they'd be more than that because I'm sure years ago they were a lot of money. I thought they would have gone up even more. And the top all looks good, and the bottom doesn't. So I suppose water has been sat, you know, sat at the bottom here. I'd be very surprised if some traces don't need redoing on this. And you can see the chip here is all the inner pins here and here, and the outer pins are the VFD. So it's believable that it's not working if these are so corroded here. You can see the horrible dirt coming off it. I've just seen the date down here, 1980. And now we'll have a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. Dear diary, today was a good day. I only killed one, two, three, Nint no, four Nintendo Switches. <sighs> How's it going? Do you know who this video is sponsored by? <sighs> yes, PCB way. So in this instance, hopefully on this DeLorean VFD clock, I will be able to get this circuit board sorted by using some IPA and also a bit of trace repair. But let's say now if it was a bit further gone, you might want to think about having a nice new circuit board. In which case then, that's where the services of PCB way would be very useful to you. PCBWay have over a decade experience in the PCB industry. They have state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities and they use the latest technology to produce high-quality PCBs that meet your specification. At PCBWay, they have a range of services including PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs, high-density PCBs, CNC machining and 3D printing. So check out the links in the description down below. So a massive thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring the My Mate Vince channel. Now let's get back to this DeLorean clock. See, I don't know how much corrosion is going to be on that side as well. This might be a bit dodgy, but I'm wondering if we should try to actually unsolder the VFD because then that will give me full access, won't it? I think I'm going to have to because down in this corner you can see the corrosion there and I'm not going to be able to get behind that. 
So I've just got my desolder station on, the gun. I'm gonna try to do it, and if, for example, it's really stubborn, I'm not gonna force it. Then I'll just settle for just trying to clean in between it. But you never know, it might just drop out, and if it does, that will be, uh, that will be good. I'm also gonna see if I've got one of these caps as well. 22 microfarad, 10 volts. Well, I haven't got a 10 volt one, but I've got a 22 microfarad, 16 volts. So I'm gonna pop one of those in. It's fine to go a little bit higher on the voltage, but not under. So we've got the negative side at the bottom here. So I'll uh, put that in now, just in case I forget which way around that goes. Interesting, it's not wanting to melt. Is this melting here? Yeah, that's melting there. I think it's because it's so corroded. You'd think the heat would still make it melt though. Yeah, that really is horrible. Well, I just have to remember that the negative is at the bottom there because I really need to clean this up. This all needs scrubbing. It's very badly corroded. It's gonna to try to add some fresh solder to these just to uh, make it, that might eat away a little bit of the corrosion. Yeah, it's definitely better when you add solder to it. And I forgot to mention at the beginning, I think the VFD display is okay because you can see this black mark here, that's called a getter. So I believe that that's pumped in there before it's sealed. And then if there's any impurities, they get stuck to the getter. So I think if that's like white, then I think that indicates that impurities has got in, like air, if I was to snap this nipple off, I think that would go as silvery white, but I think black is a good thing. Right, let's see how easy or hard this comes out. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, easy, easy, that side. Please come out easy, this side. Oh, you beauty. How nice is that? It gives me full access in here. In fact, look at those resistors. Look at them. They're, uh, he must have got a bit to them, but it's only gonna be on the outer, the color code bit anyway. It's not gonna be on the inside, is it? But we can measure them. Maybe we can try to read the color code. So that must be the crystal there. Well, I'm glad I got in here. I mean, even that transistor there looks a different color. Maybe it always was. Or oh, has there been extreme heat in this area? Oh, look at that. Made in Japan. For Taba, didn't they do, for Taba, didn't they do radio control stuff? Back in, you know, back when I was a child, back in the 90s and stuff, and the 80s. I think they did, uh, I think they did radio control stuff. Right, I am going to put that to one side. So now, what do we have here? We've got a chip labelled up OKI or DKI, O I think. MSM5528RS1842. Right, and this is the corner here I was talking about, all the corrosion. Can you see it all? Look, here. It's thick. So this did have to, uh, this did have to come off. Right, let's get scrubbing. Now, if they were smaller uh, resistors, I would have just changed them. But all my resistors are this side here. So you can see they're designed, aren't they, for like higher wattage, so I'm not gonna have any of them. But hopefully they'll be okay. 
I've got the video to look back on for the color code if needs be. I want to lift up the buttons as well because I think they're going to be dirty underneath. Right, you can see a little bit of corrosion there. So I am going to get a fiberglass pen. I hate using them, but I can't really see any other option here. What is that? Ah, oh, so it remains off a... Uh, it's a remain of uh, a red ant. I should send it off to Stestix and it can be a friend for Dave. Yeah, there you go. Also, look how much the board has bowed. Can you see? It's like a banana. Look at that. All the way up here. And on the bottom. Right, so I've got my fiberglass brush here. They're uh, they're horrible personally to work with. They really affect my skin, but they are very good at cleaning. Let's see if the underneath of these are clean. No, so you can see there's even corrosion here. So that will need to be cleaned there. You can see it's green. So really, for probably the next hour or so there's not really much to show you all I'm doing is trying to get rid of this corrosion from the board now some of it can be got rid of with just using some flux and fresh solder and then using the desolder gun and it will come off but some of this stuff is encrusted in good and proper it's like rock hard so what I've taken to doing is I'm also using the grinding pen on some bits so I'm actually grinding away the old corrosion off the solder joints and then that will allow me to put fresh solder on the solder joints in order then to take away that solder so I can give the board a good clean the objective here is to remove all the solder to get back to the board also then we can check the condition of the board as well so at the very beginning here what I'm doing is I'm just checking out the buttons to make sure that the buttons to change the hour and the minute because the left hand one is going to be for the hours and the right hand one is going to be for the minutes so when you flex it when it makes those little clicking noises when you press it down all it's doing is it's shortened the outer pins to the one that's on the board so the big metal thing flexes down and it shorts between them so let me just after i've soldered them up i just want to show you that working now well that one's fine let's check this one that's fine so you can hear that they're beeping nicely so the buttons are definitely going to be working so uh, yeah that's it I'm just fast forwarding through this now I, uh, I'll give a shout out to the my mate Vince Massive in case we don't get an opportunity later on the massive members this month are kitdigital.com Kip Hakes and Max Rokotansky having fun repairs Will Michaelis Chris Seal Felipe at mrkeebs.com DJ VG Pixie Robert from Timsey's Auto Air Daniel Watson Zeke C Anthony Dean Bazza 2 Operational 117 Russ Melanson, Save Our Stuff, Ellis Garbutt and Hunter Short. So a massive thanks to each and every one of you. So I just want to quickly show you in real time the grinding pen getting rid of all this horrible encrusted corrosion and then that will allow me to add fresh solder to the joints then it will allow me to remove all the solder and then I can put down nice new clean solders. Let's do that in real time. So on this bit here I'm actually using the grinding pen to grind away the traces as well to get back to copper because you can see on top of them a lot of them have dark green spots well that's corrosion again that's kind of gone through the solder mask so I want to get them back to copper to make sure they look okay and often 
the traces can be gone just where they meet the pads. So I want to make sure that it's like nice clean copper with no breaks or anything. I'm going to have to put so much UV solder mask on this. I'm going to end up just uh, doing all the traces that have any dots of green. I'm going to scrape them back and then put fresh solder mask on. It's going to look a mess compared to what it looks like. Well, it already looks a mess, but it's not going to look as neat because the UV solder mask that I put on will be kind of like bumpy and lumpy and a lot thicker. But the thing is, it's going to protect the board, and that's what we want to do. If I was to leave these copper traces exposed, they're going to oxidise throughout the coming years, so they need to be covered up again. But I think it's a good idea to get rid of these green dots, because that means we're getting rid of all the corrosion from the board, just in case it could be some sort of battery acid or something that's constantly eating into it. don't think it is. It's probably just water, but still, best to get rid of it. I think we might have found a break. There you go, that's not getting there, is it? See here? That's completely gone. So even if you were just to clean up every single joint, it still needs to have traces run. Right, so we're here. It's not getting to here. So you can hear it. One second. You can hear it there, yeah? Can you see it should go down here, but it doesn't. Yeah, so this one gets to here. But where does it go to? Nowhere. It has to go to here. And up here as well. Yeah, that also goes to there, doesn't it? So apart from that one track that's been completely eaten through, the rest of it actually looks okay. And the top half of the board is particularly nice. So they probably don't need doing, but what I'm doing is I'm just adding flux and I'm going to add a little bit of solder to each of the joints, just in case there was like a cold solder joint that I didn't spot. I'm just going to go across each of them. So basically everything's getting a reflow and a little dab with fresh solder. Right, that's everything re-soldered, and I'm quite happy with it, but I do have to run traces down here. I uh, I think it must have some sort of conformal coating on it, because no matter how much you clean it, it still looks messy, and you can see here it's sort of all sticky everywhere. So I think that is conformal coating. So I don't think at the end it's gonna look very nice at all, but as long as it works, then that is the, uh, the main thing. But I've definitely cleaned it up massively. So I suppose to keep it neat, what I might actually do is I might just solder from here to here to here. Do you know what? I've already got a groove, haven't I? Let me get the tiny wire, put it in here, and then it will look nice and neat rather than having wires just flopping around everywhere. Let's try to do a neater job. Let's see if this is too big. No, I think that'll be perfect. So this is about 0.3 off a millimeter. Let's use that. You know, thinking about it, it doesn't join there. Why would it join there? I initially thought it went from here to here to here. I don't think it does. I think it just bends round because otherwise you would have, they would have just done the trace from, from here to here, you know? No point in bringing it down to there. So yeah, it just needs to be bent round and joined onto that.
Okay, so if you ignore all the sticky mesh, you can see that that is really nice and that's fully attached down there and there as well. Let's see if we're getting continuity between here and here. So, have we got continuity? Yay, we have. And you see, we wouldn't have had before. Right, I am now going to get some UV mask and I'm going to start to spread it all around the place and uh, letting it go off and then we have to solder on the, the thing at the end. Let me just free up that hole there. So if we go here, you see, although some of them might look a bit iffy, I think they're all going to be all right. Also, I've just noticed a cold solder joint there. Can you see the solder didn't stick to that one? Probably because it's dirty. The actual leg, the leg of the component. That's the diode again. That diode has really, really had it. Maybe the diode might not work when I put it all back together. But the rest of them all look to be okay. So, unless the components have failed, I'm pretty confident now that the board itself will be all right. Right, so that's not short in there, not short in there. That's okay, and that's okay, good. So this is what I'm using. So what this will help do is it will stop it from oxidizing, but also, for example, this loose track here is gonna keep it in place. In order to set this now, I have to put the UV light on it. So I'm just gonna set it up here, shine it on there, keep moving it around the place every five minutes or so, and hopefully then it will go off nice and hard. Okay, so I've probably had that on for about 45 minutes in different, uh, different areas, and you can see now it's gone off. So I'm quite happy with how that's come out. Let's now pop this in and see Oh, I need to clean this up, don't I? Well, I'm just gonna put some gloves on and clean up these pins. So if I don't clean them, the solder's not gonna to stick to them very nicely. So I'm just using the fiberglass brush just to scrape them back. And then we need to put this back in the board and solder it all up and then we can test it. Now, considering the mess it was at the beginning, I'm really happy with how that's come out. I know the UV mask doesn't look nice, but look, all the solder now is silver. Remember before it was completely different up here to here? Well, now all the solder is silver. Everything is separate from each other. I've had a look through here, and it's all, uh, you know, over here, it's all nice and separate. So, uh, yeah, I think that's come out really well. Now, I'm not sure if it's gonna work because maybe some of the components have failed, but let's plug it in. Let's see what it's going to do. So you'd think the hardest part would be running the trace wire or getting rid of the corrosion, but no, the hardest part for me was trying to get it back into the enclosure. The wires that go through the hole at the back, there's four of them, and the hole's tiny, so you're having to kind of like wiggle each wire bit by bit to try to get it to, uh, to, to go down into it. Also, the whole time you're worried about breaking that glass nipple because there's not a lot of room 
for it when it's in the enclosure. So if you kind of like pulled a wire a bit too hard and the glass nipple hit against the back casing, then you'd be uh, you'd be worried about snapping it off and then all that work would be in vain and obviously the, the clock would never work again. So uh, fast forwarding through this bit, but I think it took about 15 minutes or more just to get it back into the casing. There goes my elastic band. Now the big turn on. So we're going to be going on green and black. Let's just set it to uh, let's just set it to one amp. There we go. Oh, slightly nervous. Now is it going to is it going to like it or is it going to go bang? Let's see if I can get it set up here so you can see it. Ready? Negative on. No, there's nothing there. Ha ha. It's drawing 0 0.062 amps. So do you have to short? Do you also have to have the red connect it? So do I have to go between the green and the red? Let's see. No, unless of course I'm not making a good connection. Nope, I was making a good connection. So uh, yeah, there's a problem on the circuit board. So let's get this stripped down again and I'll show you when I started testing the circuit board. Right, I'm gonna plug in the bench power supply again. Let's see if we can follow some voltages around. So we've definitely got 12 volts going into it. Okay, let's just say if we did have to have 12 volts on the the purple wire, so the red wire on this. So that would be going between here and here. Should I short it here and see if anything lights up? No, nothing lighting up. Let's see where the 12 volts ends. So we've got to go in there. We've got to go in here. That's the one that's going through Hold on, where does that one go to? Oh, they're, they're going across the resistors. Right, so we've got it going to here. Have we got it coming up here? Right, so it drops it to 6.6. That's probably normal. 6.6 .6 there. And then it comes back up here. Now it's dropped down to 1.3. So it goes from 12 to 6. So it's knocking off about that's losing about six, uh, 5.4 volts. And then 6.6 .6 minus 5.4 is gonna be 1.2 volts, which is what we have there. So that looks normal. And that feeds the display. That just goes down to the display. So that looks normal. And then from that display, hold on. If we're on here, where else does it go to? Right, so it's also fed here. Which is, right, so from here, it goes up to this resistor. Or does it not? Ah, hold on now, let's go back here. So from here we have 12 volts. And then from here it should go to here. Ah, is that the problem? Has that resistor or whatever it is blown going across here? Or should it be dropping it down by that much? Maybe that's what we should look at. That seems a hell of a drop, doesn't it? 12 volts to 0 0.1, that doesn't seem right. I think I'm gonna look at that resistor. Let's take this resistor out of circuit just in case it's gone open. I'll tell you what, now that the voltage is out of it, let's get a a 1K resistor. Let me read the markings on that. So it's coming from this way. So this one is gonna be brown. So that's one, zero, times 10,000. So that's wrong, isn't it? So that should be 100. I don't know, to me that looks like it should be 100, uh, 
a 100k resistor, 100,000 ohms. I'm going to take it out of circuit and see what it's reading out of circuit. No, it is 100k, it's correct. It is 100k. Yeah, so uh, one zero times 10,000 is 100k. So that's all right. So why haven't we got, is that right then if you put 12 volts through a 100k resistor? Is that what you would expect at the, uh, at the end of it? Oh, hold on a minute. I think I've spotted something. I think I've spotted something. Look, maybe, I can't remember now. I think, look closely here. I think this was connected to here because I remember thinking, well, why would this one be connected to oh, that one going? I, hold on a minute. I think that was connected to here. So that transistor wouldn't be working. Let me just make sure they should be separate. You know, when I put them, when I was resoldering, they're so close to each other. So look, that goes to here, but that shouldn't go to here. I think maybe that was all soldered together. Right, let me solder that up more carefully. Now let's see if it will come to life. Or oh, does that mean something else is blown now? Yeah, sure enough, I look back at the earlier footage and you can clearly see here where the arrow's pointing that they are bridged together. For such an old board, there's a few instances on here where the traces are really close to each other. But anyway, I didn't spot that when I was going around just adding solder to everything. I thought these two were together, but the transistor wouldn't be working properly because two of the legs would have been bridged. So uh, yeah, I'm just soldering back in the resistor now and also being very careful how I solder this one to make sure they don't bridge together. Right, so I'm going to solder this up very carefully, and this one very carefully. Right, let's see if they're shorting. Right, okay, so they're definitely separate now. So, no. Hold on. No. Yes, no, no, no. Excellent, and that goes to here. Right, that might be it, you know. That might be it. Come on. Give me something. Turn on the bench power supply. Black wire in here. Red wire. The live is going to be into the green. The green is round here. Please. No. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. I wonder what I've blown a transistor. I'm just going to short out between the red and the green so we've got memory going in as well. Oh, there we go. Did you see that? Did you see that? It came to life. No way. No way. Yes. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so it was because, well, obviously there was numerous things wrong to begin with. It was because I joined up that transistor, uh, two legs of the transistor there with a tiny blob of solder because it was so close to each other. But you do have to have 12 volts. So basically you have permanent 12 volts. This makes sense. Come on, Vince, use your brain. You have permanent 12 volts always feeding this clock for the memory. And then to turn it on, you have 12 volts from the ignition. So we are going to have to bridge here. We're going to have to bridge. So let's turn off the bench power supply. And we're going to have to bridge up the red and the green, aren't we? Red and the green. Right, let's get a wire to bridge that. So there's lots of heat being generated there, isn't there? On the... Uh, on those resistors. I'll tell you what we'll do to begin with, because that, that seems like, you know, this is asking a lot, isn't it? And no wonder the, the covers had gone on them. I wonder how long everything is going to actually last with this is operation if you have that heat coming from the resistors all the time under the VFD display and also next to the chip. 
tell you what we'll do first of all I want to go on as if the car is I'm going to turn my bench power supply back on as if the car's turned off but the battery's connected I want to see if those resistors get warm then so we're always going to have a supply on the red let me just explain this bit here because I have cut bits from this video. So the resistors I'm talking about are the high wattage ones, you know, the ones that had the outer covering come away, the color code come away. Now that's their job. What they will do is they're turning 12 volts into six ish volts and six ish volts into one volt. So they're getting rid of their energy via heat. So obviously they are designed to get hot. My slight concern is if they're hot all the time, is it not going to degrade the chip and all the components around it and maybe even the VFD? So I just want to put power into it now on the memory the same as the ignition being off and the car just sat there with the battery connected. I want to see whether these resistors are getting warm or are they only working, getting warm, when the ignition is on and the clock's actually lit up. So that's what I'm checking for now. Right, so that's what it's going to be like normally. And then what will happen is when you bridge, when you turn the ignition on, we're going to bridge between the red and the green which is down here. Let me just see if it comes alive. Hold on. Yeah, it's alive now. Yeah. And then let's take it off. So that's the same as having the ignition off. So every time this goes on to here, that's the same as the ignition starting. There. Right, so uh, I just want to quickly see something a minute as far as memory is concerned. If we were to do this on here, and I just want to hit this a couple of times. Is that going to change? There, it does change. Right, so we're now one, yeah? Let's now turn the ignition off. We'll let the capacitor drain. One, it remembers it, look. How clean is that? Look at that, I mean, it will look much nicer when you have this display on it here. Right, so that's that. I just want to see if the resistors are going to get warm as they are now. Just want to leave it a little bit longer, see if they do get warm. Saying that, we'll know if we measure voltage going through them. I don't think they're going to be in operation right now. So if we go here and here, we're going to have 12 volts. Which we do. So now, do we have them on? Do we have 6 volts here? No. So those resistors are only on when the car's on. So that isn't such a big deal, is it? Because it's unlikely a car this age you're going to be driving for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. But yeah, they certainly do heat up. And that's the reason why all the outer thing has flaked off. Right, okay, I'm going to turn off my bench power supply. I am going to put this back together. And then we can bridge up the pins here. That's so, so, so good. Right, so I've bridged up red and green, so that's going to mimic 12 volts feeding the ignition and also the memory. It's only drawing 0.06 of an amp, so uh, 60 milliamps, very little. How nice does that look? I wonder is this 24 hour? No. And there's no dot for PM, is there? No. Right, so we are 9. nine thirteen. And I'm going to leave this on for half an hour or something, and let's see if it uh, keeps time with this one here. How great is that, though? Okay, it's been around about half an hour. If you have a look now, you can see that it's keeping time. So obviously the crystal in here is doing its job. So uh, I'm so happy with that there. What lets it down is it's taking an impact damage and there's actually a crack going through it. So let me zoom in. You can see that certain angles, can you see, uh, there you go, can you see the crack going through here? Yeah. So you can see when you're looking at it there on the four, can you see it's going past it there and it's blocking digits out, the crack's so big. So you've got that, but also the passenger, because I think this sits low down in the center console, I think the driver's going to be okay because he's kind of looking down from it from here, he or she, but the passenger is going to be looking down here. And can you see 
the, the green light is refracting off these bits here, which is impact damage again. So no amount of polishing is going to get rid of that. So as a nice treat at the end of the video, John said that he's going to just do a, a guy asked him if he could do a quick minute of this connected in his car. So hopefully now you'll get to see a little bit of footage as long as this makes it back in one piece off the DeLorean with those amazing gull wing doors. And uh, hopefully you will see this working in its natural habitat. So I'm so pleased that that's working again because I reckon that that hasn't worked for donkey's years. So it's great to see it working again. So from me, that's it, but I'm gonna hand you over to John. Thank you for watching. Hi Vince, as promised, a quick video of the car. The clock is back in, fitted and working perfectly. Thank you. I'm just stepping to the door. It's a little bit windy here today, so hopefully that won't show up too much on the video. I've owned the car for a year and a half and that clock has never worked. But looking at the state of it on your video, you can see why. So I've just had the interior refitted. And the clock goes in very nicely with that. So this here is the Rio stat that you talked about on the video, which doesn't work in my car, but it doesn't affect the clock from working. So it's a bit bright. But you can see it's working perfectly. So I'm very, very happy. Thank you very much for the fix. My, oh my, how nice does that car look? Imagine the early 80s. I would have just started school. Imagine how futuristic that would look driving past you. I mean, even now it looks futuristic. I just think the styling off it looks so, so clean. So thank you, John, for filming that. And thank you for allowing me to work on the clock. I said at the beginning of the video that I like VFD displays. I think I'm slowly becoming a vacuum fluorescent display nerd. I'll have to hunt down if there's any Facebook groups out there or any like secret societies of uh, VFD nerds. If not, maybe I should start one up myself because I can't be the only one that thinks these displays look amazing. They even look better when they're off than on, just looking into that glass tube. They just look so, I don't know what it is about them. I just, they just look magical. Don't, don't know what it is. I'm sure I, I can't be the only one that feels that way. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed this one and I will see you soon for another Fix It video. Take care, everyone. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright